Hello again. Welcome to another edition of Arts and Ideas. I'm Sue Swinand, and it's a great delight to have Laura Kohalen as my guest today. I've known Laura for a number of years as a fiber artist, but she's really been expanding out in all directions and doing some very interesting sculptural work and installations. So I'm delighted to have you here, Laura. Thanks for coming in today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's y delightful. You know, I was wondering, I'm kind of happy that you brought a couple of your quilts in too, because she's a really superb quilter. And um, the other thing is I haven't had that many fiber artists on the program. And I was wondering, are there a lot of fiber artists and quilters in the area? Well, I belong to a quilt group, Quilters Connection, in Boston, and they do amazing things on fiber. I am very much a baby in that group. A baby. Um, <laughs> but I, I put fiber in just about everything I make, so I've kind of jumped off the bed onto the wall and now onto the floor with my fiber. So. Um, I wouldn't call myself an expert quilter by any means. Um, some of these women have 12 to 15 stitches per inch. And I'm getting older with the arthritis and everything, and I'm lucky if I've got five or six. So, so. isn't that interesting that um, quilters would be very concerned about the number of stitches per square inch? Oh, and Duh. if you send sure. something to a show, they look on the back of the quilt to see how perfect it is on the back. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't worry too so much about So fiber that. is the main center of your work. Yeah, I am loving the fiber, and I'll tell you why. It's all about story. Um, I make art because it makes me feel good and it makes me grow. Um, I want to show you my first piece. Um, okay. It's called Thicket, and it's right. It's at WPI in the Student Center next no to kidding. the chairs. Yeah, you can go up to the second floor and you can see it. And it's it's there for I guess ten years. And um, in this quilt, I use commercial fiber, commercial fabrics, and I'm using design to sort of give you the feeling of, um, or my feeling of being in my own skin and thinking of a small animal inside of a thicket looking out into the world. Oh, it, it has a very uh, tight, pressing in kind of density about the shapes and yeah. colors. Yeah, and I'm, I'm using, I'm going abstract and I'm using, oh, now uh, this you is know, a close also up, a little So you can realist. see the little details of the bird and yeah, so I think it's a fun piece, and it's a it's a piece about comfort. Would you much. call this a traditional technique? Um, I think they call this um, stack and slash. So you just have all these squares, and you stick them down, and you know four or five of them, and you slash them, and then you reassemble them. And okay, there's a lot of fun. To so make it's this kind one. of faceted that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sort of a, if you look at it closely, it's all it's all in a grid. Oh, yeah. I, I noticed that now. You can see all now. the little squares. Those That's are the ones the that you sort of helps. re... Yep. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to move on and show you this. I wanted to put in one example of my um, little affirmations, I call them. This one's called Your Own House, and this is from a mystic called Kabur. It's, um, it's a saying of his, and it's, it says, um, what's most alive of all is inside your own house. And what I did with this was I found this little piece of organza um, that Here's the that's, it's lifted up now. But this little piece of organza that covers the image, and it's um, someone must have made it 60 or 70 years ago, and they would, they're doilies, and you put them on the back of a couch. And this is all embroidery of a little garden, and so I had to use it. So oh, the little flowers are yeah, hand embroidered. Yeah, so you, the book yeah. part is that you would lift that up and see the image underneath. Oh. And um, what I did with this was I made it in um, sort of in the model of a Tibetan tanka. Mm -hmm. And the tankas are what the monks use. Usually they're small as meditation tools, and they will paint a deity or a mandala or even a scene onto cloth and then they roll them up and they keep them in their little bags and they use them to meditate with. So wow. that's the idea. I have these little pieces all so over is, my house. Are you considering this a book then? I noticed I'm you calling said that it you a book up in my in my website. Well, so yeah. my books always are simple. They always have words in them. They're not always 2D. 
um, but they are always an affirmation. I'm a unashamed self-help junkie, so these are all over my house, and sometimes my friends will buy them. And so, I wanted to show you one of those. Um, what this, a beautiful idea that is! Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It's just sort to of put my the little positive in a form that you witness every day. Absolutely, it's kind of like a fridge magnet, only bigger <laughs> um, <laughs> and this, more beautiful. Thank you. This quilt is called St. Lucia, or Christmas in St. Lucia. And I made this quilt. I will tell you that the, the circles of which African fabric in the middle were actually the leftover pieces from the quilt that's behind us. Um, and I went down to St. Lucia to see my friend Jill, who's in the Peace Corps there, teaching the kids in the schools. Now, St. Lucia was colonized by the Brits for generations. I think their independence was in the 70s. And um, so their school system is very much, think boarding school, very strict and very, you know, the women there dress in nylons and 110 degrees and they have their shoulders and arms covered. Anyway, it was a lot of fun. These kids had never had art before and Jill is down there um, teaching these kids in this very constrained environment about art and they're just jumping out of their skin. Is this skins. Jill Watts? Jill Watts, yeah. yeah. So, and she's got a book for sale that she made with the kids and everything. So this is a quilt about energy. So I used the circles and the brights to depict this energy that I felt going down there at Christmas now time. Now this, this one behind us and the one you're showing here, they're very beautiful colors and have a very decorative quality about them. And um, it's interesting that the idea of using a quilt for various purposes. One, the utilitarian bed cover, as you say, the floor cover there. <laughs> but it could be just a thing of beauty, a decorative piece, or it yeah. could be something more conceptual. Yeah, on the back of this one, I have, um, I have some traditional plaid from St. Lucia that I'll have to put on my website, laurakahalen.com, so you can check it out and see the traditional plaid on the back. Okay. So, um, so this piece was um, hand stitched to a pretty good degree, but there's also machine stitching on here. So I like to mix things up a little. Whenever I feel like hand stitching, I'll hand stitch when I feel like, yeah. So um, this piece is called Fun House. And the original quilt did not have the images. I made it, it was probably the first, it is the first big quilt that I ever made. And it's called a traditional schoolhouse pattern. But what I was doing was I was getting divorced and I was trying to manifest a house for my two boys and myself. So while I'm stitching these, these houses. So the funny part is the house we ended up getting, actually it's a, a two-sided duplex. So it's actually got the two chimneys on each end and it looks like a big box. So it looks just like the schoolhouse. So these all have personal meaning yeah, for so you. Yeah, so it's magic. It worked. The magic worked. But yeah. the audience might notice too that you've kind of changed the traditional schoolhouse by putting additional figures and appliques and are those yeah. prints as well? Or well, when I went back 20 years later, we were having a show at the Sprinkler Factory, and so I took this quilt, and um, it was already pretty old and tattered. It had been in the washing machine a gazillion times, and so I added imagery to revisit um, the domestic violence at the, at the time that prompted me to get out of that marriage. So that's what this quilt is so about. So the quilt is about things, other things that might be inside that house. Exactly. It's I noticed exactly. there are it's the women story. in very Oops, particular yeah. roles and yeah, you see the yeah the very uh, traditional yes. um, woman in the yeah in the quilt. Oops, I'm sorry. And it gets a little bit scary if you go into it, and that happens with a lot of my work. Um, and it's kind of uh, the layering that I do that. Um, makes my... You can go as deep as you want. Exactly. <laughs> or you can be surprised and not happy if you're looking for pretty and you go and you say, oh, all of a sudden, oh, not so pretty. Well, again, <laughs> that's kind of what takes the quilts out of the realm of just being decorations for the bed or the wall and gives them a concept that yeah. really makes a statement. Uh, I know you're very socially conscious and you know working for a lot of different issues and yeah yeah well artwork. i'll talk about my mother and one of the really good things my mother did is she turned me into a flag waver i'm always <laughs> the one that's saying wait a minute what's wrong with this picture 
How did you get to be a, f a fiber artist? How did you oh, learn sewing and um, quilting in the first place? My mother um, gave me, uh, for Christmas, a little toy sewing machine. So I must have been very young, I'm guessing seven. I had one of those. Yeah. And I was making doll clothes, of course. And I was stitching. making balls of knots. <laughs> 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 and the stitching would come apart, and I was extremely frustrated. And my mother saw that and um, let me use her sewing machine. Okay, and so the first thing I did when I was out of my mother's watch was I sewed over my fingers. <laughs> and luckily, my mother keeps a very clean house and had a very sharp needles, and it went right through my nail. Oh and my I was goodness. fascinated. And I didn't get an infection. I didn't show her because that would have been the end of that, right? Um, but I was fascinated how cleanly the needle went through my nail and that my finger was stuck to the sewing machine. So I tell You're myself. You're glued to the machine yes, for life. Yes, that's I tell myself that it was a blood pact, you know, <laughs> with the sewing machine. That's cute. So um, I, this piece I wanted to show you because this is oh, also okay. about feminine. Um, well, this is also about domestic violence. And this is a piece that I made. It's a cyanotype, which is you put chemicals on fabric. They used to do it on paper with um, they print on paper with, that way yeah. with flowers and things way back in the day. So what I did with this was I made a character print, and a character print was something that they did in the 30s and 40s to take cute little images and repeat them on the fabric. And what I did was I took not so cute little image, which is a gun and a little sign that says feminine protection, and I put it. The giant pad. And I used, <laughs> used it as a resist on this, on this fabric to make a cyanotype. And then I ended up putting little bunnies, whoop, putting little bunnies around the edges, and I'll talk so about that. So it has that tension of being really funny. You know, you get the first impact, yeah. and it's really funny. But it's also very heavy, so yeah. there's a very strong uh, feeling at, that results from... Yeah, so that's the connection, or that's yeah. the question, really. Is yeah. this just a pillow, or is it sculpture? Uh, you know, you tell me. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it yeah. becomes a sculpture, I think, a work of art for sure. Yeah. Now, oh, I wanted to ask about the bunnies, because they come up again. Okay, yes, let's talk about the bunnies, because I'm going to take you down the rabbit hole a little bit, but I promise we'll be back in the sunlight very soon. Um, my, my stuff is about story. So this is a um, sculpture that I made that is very dear to me because it's about my mother and myself and our relationship. Now, my mother had mental illness, okay? And one of the things that people will know who have people like that in their family, it's not as uncommon as you might think, is that there's a lot of energy spent in making things look like they're just fine when really they're not. Covering things over. Yeah, so yeah. my mother would, um, I was the girl in between two boys, so probably because of that, my mother chose me as the person to project her pain onto. So my mother would say not nice things to me when it was just her and I, but when there were other people around, my mother would say nice things about me. And one of the really nice things she said about me was that her head's in the clouds, which is the title of this piece. Oh, so this next one is yeah. her head's in the clouds? So you'll see up top, I use old electrical wiring to make these this cloud, and you'll see up top that I'm there looking a little spaced out. Um, they didn't call it ADD or ADHD back then, but I, there's also a little chair there that I used to have to sit in, you know, to calm down, right? But if you look on the back of the piece, you'll see these little bunnies. Now, I put these, just like the pillow, I put the bunnies on because it just seemed to call for the bunnies. Didn't really know why, and when I was making um, Christmas time this year, the piece that you will see the very last of this video, um, I was putting bunnies in the piece that I had molded that had no ears and no feet. And this repressed memory came, just washed over me when, this, when I was making this piece about this bunny. Now, um, the sad story, um, my brother at the time, he was probably 10, my older brother, was torturing these little frogs and snakes from the creek that was near our house. And the memory that washed over me was our pet rabbit 
Um, the lore was that my father had to shoot the rabbit because there had been an accident, but when the memory came back to me, it was that my brother had tortured this rabbit until my father had, to the point that my father had oh to my. shoot this rabbit to put it out of its misery. So that's why I'm, I'm rescuing all these bunnies all the time. I couldn't figure it out. Oh. So I, what I want to say is that my mother and the Tibetans, I have a Buddhist practice, are my greatest teachers in my life and I'm very grateful for that because my mother, well the Tibetans first taught me that all this stuff that happens to all of us is your material, it's your manure that you you have to spread it around your garden to make your you and your life grow. It's not something that you're going to toss out. So that's kind of what I do in my work. And my and it's why it makes it gives it an emotion, you know. And um, because it it gets at the truth. Exactly. It I'm, gets I'm at telling the truth you, and the real things in our lives. Exactly. I'm telling you my little secrets, and you don't yes. have to get the whole secret. You can get your own secret, you know, yes. out of it. Yes. Um, but and my mother, what she taught me um, about was uncertainty, and that if you can get beyond uncertainty, you move to the next level, which is discovery. Yes. And discovery but is... But you have to be in uncertainty to get to discovery. Exactly, discover. and yes. that's why I'm very grateful. My two brothers, their fate was not so so sunny as mine because they never got out of that. Mm. Um, but because I had to fight my way out, you know, I, I really got... And she's a sunny person. Five <laughs> minutes, am, let's go, let's go. Okay, <laughs> so this is about um, the fact of discovery is in my work. It's much easier to discover than it is to invent. And so that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Okay, so All right. this is called Mud Flap Girl. Um, I was a runaway teenager, it was a good move for me. But what I learned out in the world was there was also under the guise of freedom, just like under the guise of caring, there's a predatory energy out there in our culture. And so this is about rape culture. It's a feminist wow. piece. And um, that a true uh, sexual revolution would be a uh, change in consciousness, Susie Bright. This is called Celebrity or Celeb Queen of the Insects. My friend Stephen gave me some nudie cards and I had to cut them in half and she's cut in half. It's about what young women have to deal with when they discover their sexuality in the world. Um, here we go. I want to talk about this piece. This is a beauty. I saw this piece and oh, I loved it. Go yeah, ahead. this is a recent piece. It's called um, White Babies for Jesus and it's a political commentary. And um, at first you think it's this great sunny piece, but then you, when you come into it, you see, well, I should go back. You will see that there are actually women bearing their breasts and producing milk for the state. And I want to bring your attention down to the bottom where that little middle bum hole right there I have named Mitch McConnell are not so, <laughs> not so much friend down in Kentucky. Uh, but I don't know that you're telling us a lot of things, but I don't know the well, audience has noticed that all the little babies are Gerber all babies. All the little white Gerber babies. Did you yeah. have to print those yourself? I covered little buttons. And it yeah, was a you from covered a, each yeah. button yeah, with fabric? from a fabric. <gasps> it's just a little. And is that a, a rabbit fun. skin? That's a rabbit skin. Oh, oh my actually, goodness. no, that's the lamb skin. Jesus is the blood of the lamb. Okay. So that's a lamb okay. skin. So I'm going to move on because we're almost out of time. But yep. um, this is called grief. And this is about how much control we have in our lives, which isn't a whole lot, but that if we can make grief our friend, it's our biggest ally if you can open your heart up to it. Mm -hmm. And um, there's red thread going all through these pieces. Oh, I just see that. Yeah, yeah, some of them are on track, some of them go off track, a lot like life. And when I was making this, I'm thinking about the women in India who make kantha cloth and how the imperfections of the piece you know, the patches and the thread breaking and all that is the part of the piece and how we as women, while we're making money for to feed our children, we're also doing the cooking, the cleaning, the wiping of noses and everything else. This is called samsara. Samsara is a Sanskrit word and it has to do with the world and wandering and reincarnation and what we carry through our lives. And it's, um, I'm using the soft element in sculpture all those with the little, fiber as uh, all the little... And is that a cyanotype process? That uh, no, that the I just... The little feet um, are it's printed it's, onto the pillows. Yeah, they're not feet. They're actually arms going like this. It's, you know. Oh, yeah. And, but it's, um, this I just did on the computer, but it's originally a photo transfer. So this one is called dis, um, Shopping for Chicken. It reads, Shopping for Chicken, a Disquieting Affair. And this is almost a reverse affirmation for me. This is um, 
me reminding myself that factory farming is not a good idea and, and hopefully the idea of comfort food for me is evolving from chicken and rice to not chicken and rice. This one I like, it's the same idea, it's called factory, and what I like about this, it's in my it's house. It's a gorgeous piece. And oh, it's more subtle, and when the, the light hits the little pom-poms, the shadows move around in a circle, and the little pom-poms on the heart of the animal are like a dark little circle that moves That's around. That's a beauty. This is um, called, trans, uh, what's this one called? Um, Translated Not Dead. It's kind of a story that I'll, I'll put it on my website. But it's a, a, something that my son broke when he was little. It's an early piece of mine, and I had to give it new life. So it says on there, keep it light enough to travel, which is a song by the Be Good Tanyas. And the bird um, is all about the afterlife, and red is um, auspicious. This is, um, okay, this piece was made for Lost and Found show for my crit group. And it's about past and present and where I am now in my life, another biographical piece, and I want to read to you the artist statement that we were required as a group, we all voted and I lost, to have. It's called My Romantic Life. I used to have this magnetic mirror suit that I liked to wear because it attracted these wild and adventurous types. Eventually they would want to get into the suit with me and things would get dark and a little scary. So one day I took off the suit, I burned it, and I buried the ashes. And there are still sparks out there flying about, but I don't think they'll stick anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we're going to have to get over to the uh, sprinkler factory and take a look at a few of her pieces that you have in a show there at this point. So yeah. let's take a look at those. Okay. Well, here we are over at the Sprinkler Factory at 38 Harlow Street in Worcester, and uh, we're looking at some more work of Laura's, and Laura, tell us about this show. Well, the name of this show is the Second Floor Sculpture Park, Sculpture, Installations, and Large Scale 2D. And this is the first time that both sides of the Sprinkler Factory space have been opened up, so it's really a park. It's There's huge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are 50 artists in this show, um, up to three pieces per artist. Um, there's some really fun work here. And a lot of the works are enormous, but this is a space that can handle it. And the show was installed by Louis Frere, too. Mm -hmm. And uh, that must have been quite a task. Yeah, and we're hoping he's going to do it next year. He mentioned that he's thinking about it. So yeah, uh, we've yeah. got our fingers crossed. Yeah. So this is one of the pieces you have in the show. And what, what's the title of this one? The name of this piece is Morning in America. It's a play on words. Um, it's in reference to Ronald Reagan's Morning in America commercial in the 80s that people say made him win the election. This, that was his Make America Great Again. And so this is Morning in America, M-O-U-R-I-N-G in America, and it's got the momentum of more I here. And I would say that this is one of my books, um, more specifically, it's a protest sign, I guess. But with the books um, series of mine, it's very simple. It um, This one's in 3D, not 2D. It um, has words and an affirmation. It actually has one word, and it says defiance here on the little tag, and that's my affirmation of hope because I think... Um, the courage to stand up. Yeah, well, Gloria Steinem said that hope is an unruly thing, um, but I think that if we call our senators and our representatives yeah. and, and hit the streets when we're called to, that you know, we can make a change. And, um, I have to tell you, Laura is a person with a lot of courage. <laughs> well, Eli Weissel, who knows about fascism, he said that if we don't transmit our experience, that we betray our experience. So we just got to get out there. And, and you got that courage from your mom. Oh, absolutely, I did. Thank you. What do you call this one, Laura? Um, I've called this one What Small Ghosts Way, but I'm really asking a question of the viewer. What I'm doing here is sort of making a space. I'm using uh, shadow and reflection and suggestion of memory to sort of ask the question, what lies on the other side of silence? And uh, when I was a teenager, I read a lot of George Eliot, 
whose name was really Marianne Evans, right? She was a Victorian writer, so when you're a teenager um, from England. And what she said on the other side of silence, she said that the roar that we would die from the, the sound of the grass growing and the hearts beating of all the little animals. Oh, <laughs> I just love these little shoes. They're very antique. Aren't they they must be hundreds of years old. Yeah. Very interesting piece that's so, intriguing. Yeah. You know, it makes you want to look at it and think about it. Well, I have a little secret up here. There's a little word, it's hard to see, but it says bardo. And um, bardo, I explain over here, is a suspension of the familiar. When there is a suspension of the familiar, external restraints diminish. It's kind of like meditation. You're, you're making yourself very still. Wow. So it's, it's an invitation to the viewer. There are a lot of suggestive things of stillness and change and cool. Well, this is a very intriguing piece. What do you call this one? This one I call Fishing for Wishes, and I've upended it a little bit because if you're a fisherman, you'd be wishing for fishes, right? Fishing for wishes. Yeah. Very so, poetic. So most of my work is about the life of emotions. And this one is another invitation to the viewer um, to make their own interpretation. Maybe we should point out first the elements of the piece because it might be something they can't see quite as well. But these are all little ice fishing rods. Yes. And this little stool and the, the rods have the little reels on the back of them. And... Uh, what was this, a little ottoman or something? Yeah, and I pulled all the fiber off of this piece so that the only fiber is the connection, so that you have to get that there is a connection. The Here, fiber is yeah, the connection. Yeah, that this piece is about connection, and I have a little hierarchical thing going on with the high and low, and um, like I said, it's about emotion. So if I were to describe this in um, Jungian terms, it would be something like I'm um, activating my subconscious archetypes to translate into the present day language or something like that. All those rabbits. Yeah, the Tibetans would say I was inviting my um, demons to tea. But um, I am for 30 years a laborer, truck driver, single mom, so I would pr probably just say that I'm trying to figure out what's going on in this piece to see what's what's happening. Um, what are my feelings all about? But the references with the little rabbits that are trapped and uh, almost looks like they're going to be drowned in a lobster trap or yeah, something. Yeah, well, like I said, it's and really... I see. Yeah, I really want somebody to get their own thing going with this. But it, for me, it's... We talked about the bunnies before. I'm, I'm kind of... I'm in a good place now, and I'm kind of pulling my parts of myself, you know, yeah, to me. And, you know... Very, very mm -hmm. interesting piece. I love the, the way the strings connect them. All Thank right. You. Well, you know, I really appreciate your telling us all about your work. It's more than I, you know, more. Th it's nice to have you talk about it because then it allows me to engage with it in a better, deeper way. Oh, so thanks thank for all you. that uh, insight. And uh, I know you have a website now. What's your website? I do. It's called laurakahalen.com. So should I spell it? Then we'll put it up we'll on the screen. Put it up. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's the last thing. But take a look at her work. It's really quite engaging, and uh, I I think you'll see more of it in in the coming years. Year. But thank anyway, you. thanks a million, Laura. Oh, I really you. enjoyed it. And thank you. We hope to see you again next time for another edition of Arts and Ideas.